So let's uh, kick off and uh, let me introduce and welcome the panelists. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce His Excellency Rana Bhumi Singh Todiji, Minister of Sports, Youth Affairs, and the Non Resident Affairs with the Government of Punjab. Komal, who's just joined us, is a dynamic uh, serial women entrepreneur. First generation founded two companies, the first in 2009 in the space of tech and AI with international offices in Japan, Taiwan, and the US, but headquartered in Mohali, where all 300 plus team engineers and AI experts are based. She's a great believer and supporter of Punjab and aspires to promote Punjab on the world map. Our next panelist is Sarabjiji. He is the managing director of Akal Information Systems, a leading HR technology company in India. Under Sarabjiji's leadership, Akal has transformed into number one cross border HR technology between India and Japan. He was awarded the Udyo Ratna Award for his exceptional work in accelerating the economic development of India through cutting edge and innovative HR in 2019. He is the former member of the Digital Railway Board and the former secretary to the government of India with 36 years of experience in all aspects of railways from legal to tech all of it and he's an expert in that so i'm going to uh, with your permission your excellency i'm going to have the conversation which starts with you and we would love to know your views with the new futures for the grand Strait. over to you minister Ranaji? Hello. Is it time to be? Yes, always. First of all, you know, it's a great delight that um, against our odds, uh, you, Nikuri, uh, and uh, Frank had made it possible to be together on uh, uh, this virtual meeting of the RSS. So I'm really, uh, you know, thankful that you remembered me last year and it was a very nice experience and I was literally looking forward to meet up uh, for our next destination which unfortunately you know because of this COVID-19 we uh, made it and we travel but uh, I appreciate your efforts and uh, my uh, sincerest uh, thanks and regards to Mr. Frank and you to bring everyone together. Uh, and uh, I think this was the need of the art which you had uh, really worked on that uh, the movement, uh, keeping in view the situation all over the world, it's not in Punjab, it's not in India, but uh, all over the world, you know, the humanity uh, and the human being have literally suffered uh, because of this deadly virus. So, uh, Anything in particularly, uh, I know very well, she's here, and uh, other two uh, panelists, uh, I also uh, welcome that, and I offer myself all the services, whatever the best we can do together to bring the thoughts of the RSS and do something better for the uh, community, for the people of India, and particularly Punjab, I would say. So, once again, a lot for uh, giving this opportunity. We would love to hear from you the synopsis uh, of what plans you have in Punjab and the Grenvi State. Uh, you know, uh, in Punjab, uh, I feel that uh, you must be reading the news all over. Uh, even the Prime Minister of the country had mentioned that we should uh, adopt the ways and the strategy what Punjab has done uh, and he had all the rest of the Chief Ministers of India. So, uh, you know, we heard the Punjab was the first state to put curfew and uh, it was again very essential at that time. As
as the virus was you know uh, coming in and nobody knew okay, what is the speed of the virus what are the medicines which are still you know we are try and error and uh, our chief minister captain amrinder singh a visionary man and experienced person and ex army he took his decision we had a cabinet meeting and we discussed red wear everything and then ultimately we decided to go for a curfew which literally helped uh, the punjabis to curtail uh, the spreading of this virus and uh, we shut the schools we shut the business houses we shut the industry we knew that we are going to suffer economically which we have in a, in a big way you know punjab is very famous all over the world but punjab is just uh, you know 1.5% uh, or quarter 2% uh, of the whole of india and uh, we are known as the food ball of india we are the biggest uh, uh, you know supply of cereals food grains sugarcane and various other things but uh, uh, now we are mentally prepared we have more than 50000 beds ready for the you know isolation beds we have uh, um, uh, you know uh, propped up our uh, hospitals uh, to a level where ventilators and other equipment is required for the uh, medical people who are fighting this virus from the front and um, our police forces are very much in complete action to uh, serve their duty to discipline the people to discipline the uh, population of punjab and uh, we really appreciate the civil administration the media so everybody had uh, uh, come together during this crisis and punjab is today we are uh, in total we have about uh, 92 uh, you know get in punjab in all last four months and um, a total of uh, more than 2 lakh 30000 people have been tested till till now and uh, the present uh, people who are um, uh, positive there are about 3800 and some uh, which uh, again they are being isolated and given the available treatment and keeping them in a uh, complete uh, quarantine uh, system so that also you know we suffered because we had uh, about uh, uh, 1 million uh, sorry 10 million people who are uh, nris you know they were they visit this country this part of punjab every year so i don't say that they have brought it with them but you know uh, there is a uh, uh, again uh, it's a immunity you know they they were uh, uh, they are used to it better i would say living a better kind of water you know punjab is suffering from the drinking water also we discussed this lot time in uh, in spain about the water you remember yes, yes. so the underground water is going bad yes. so when there is a bad water the immunity also reduces so uh, when they come here and they are used to a better water and when they drink this kind of water and the atmosphere is different the weather conditions are different so they they are more immune to catch this kind of virus and as you know that this is a uh, uh, this uh, flourishes and this moves this virus very fast so with that we also had uh, uh, more cases in punjab so with uh, all uh, i mean with obviously the impact of uh, covid uh, it has left a lot of uncertainties and so how is the government uh, going to cope with the uncertainties because you know, uh, we are reducing the uncertainties we have now opened the industry we have opened the uh, commercial uh, establishment other than the malls and the uh, cinema halls you know but the uh, industry now we are our whole industry in ludhiana we have a biggest hazri industry we have a cycle auto uh, cycle parts auto parts 
and in Jalandhar we have sports goods, and, uh, various other uh, leather goods. So all these industries are working now up to 60% production because with the protocol and keeping uh, social distance and uh, we are not allowing the 100% production but uh, the, the industries have come back within the last yeah. three days they are reaching they started from 30% production but now they have reached up to 55-60% production so we are trying to bring our a bond economy and the shattered economy back slowly, slowly. And then we have uh, excise, uh, biggest uh, revenue coming from excise, which is, uh, you know, liquor uh, vents and various things. So we are also keeping in view the social distance and also we keep a lockdown, complete lockdown on Saturday and Sunday and any other uh, uh, public holiday. So we we keep that lockdown and uh, we are gaining our we are trying to get back slowly slowly on on the wheels now. This is how we are doing. So um, Ranaji, the question here is now with uh, COVID happening and all uh, uncertainties, even in terms of students who've been going. Uh, in fact, a large chunk, I think about fifteen to sixteen lakh of students are going to the west to study, and obviously. There's going to be a change and a huge change happening in the immigrations and uh, because the jobs for the U.S. Uh, youth are not going to be available. So there's no, I mean, obviously that's going to be the first priority. So how are you looking at uh, making sure that the youth are kept here and enough of incentive and enough of jobs are created for them? Literally, we are working uh, in a different way we are planning in a big way the, uh, the skill uh, education and uh, uh, we are trying to train our youth in various because Punjab youth is a it's a very very uh, Punjab is a young uh, state and uh, as you rightly said that we have not many students going to Australia, Australia New Zealand, UK, Canada America, various parts of the world. They are all now suffered because we have also written, I'm also looking after the NRI Affairs Ministry. So we have written to various governments that they have given the, you know, and they are not, uh, they are from uh, middle class or lower middle class people who have opted to go there. And they have given feces through, you know, through their nose. And now after two, three months, uh, they are uh, organizing their institutions, their colleges, their universities are shut. So first of all, we said that you have to take uh, the responsibility of these students and the ones who are coming back, you should return the money to them and give them some kind of compensation that they have spent money to go there, uh, buying the tickets, staying there, paying the, uh, you know, PG rents and various other things. And uh, I don't know what is the uh, strategy of those countries, but we are all ready to receive our youth back and uh, we are going to provide skill education to them on various fields whether it is a mechanics or IT or telephone repairs or the plumbing jobs and uh, mechanical jobs, the masonry jobs and uh, elect electrical jobs. So we are trying to train a lot of youth and bring them back uh, to uh, to a point where we can at least uh, employ them or they can do their own business work and they can open uh, small uh, units and small uh, uh, micro or mini uh, you know enterprises which is uh, the government is encouraging them by giving loans on a very nominal interest and single single window system we have started Anybody who wants to do a, a, a small business and he or she would be, uh, you know, entertained at the uh, highest level and in prayer. So this, uh, uh, you know, when you're talking about training and we've lost your voice. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this would be a good time to, I think, uh, call upon uh, Pohal. 
uh, because when you mentioned training and IT, and I've been talking to her, and I think they're doing some interesting work. So, Komal, uh, could we have uh, a brief on what we're doing? And also, I would love uh, if you could let us know because you have most of your businesses in the Silicon Valley, and what is it that has brought you back to Punjab and invest in uh, Mohali at the IT uh, city? Yeah, so hi, thank you, Neetu. So um, I really started my businesses out of Gurgaon um, a decade back. And honestly, um, you know, our experience of being in a, in, a, in a tire one city was pretty bad. I think the number one drawback that these cities really have is the infrastructure. It's, uh, the infrastructure has now become, um, you know, something which is not being able to cope up with the number of people who are working there. So, you know, whether it's electricity or internet, just the basics of living up, very poor. Secondly, just the amount of time that people are spending in commute, you know, especially when we look at people who are family oriented, women, commute time going to, going to an office in Bangalore or Delhi takes a toll on the health. Uh, and therefore, I think just the quality of life, if you're in the middle, if you're in your middle age or if you're in the middle management or you're a founder, what you're looking at even post COVID, I think health has become such a, an important parameter, your quality of life, your work life balance for women. Uh, for example, in my company right now, I have a 30% women um, uh, employment and I'm not talking about, you know, you know, the lower level of the hierarchy. I'm looking at leadership levels. So my AI experts, my, my technology teams are 30% women. And again, safety becomes a very big factor. The Tri-City, I think it's the brand Mohali is a part of a Tri-City because Chandigarh is known for modern living, fantastic infrastructure, you know, education. So... Uh, Mohali automatically becomes like a mini neighbor of, of Chandigarh, right? And a modern uh, neighbor of Chandigarh. So I think these are the these are the advantages that, that a city like Mohali has. And the government should not try to look at Mohali as another Bangalore or Hyderabad. I don't think we need to get there. But as far as we are able to brand our, our advantages, which a, which a Bangalore or Hyderabad has already lost, I think that's where uh, the advantage of Mohali really comes in. And uh, it's, it's amazing to see the thrust that the government is finally giving to IT. You know, we've been an agricultural uh, state. You always ask me, what are you doing in IT in Punjab? But I think recently there's been a very big uh, you know, promotion of IT in the city with the coming of the IT city close to the Aero city, where about 1,700 acres of land has been allotted to um, IT companies like us. And you have an amazing blend of educational institutions that have set up now, like Plushka and Amity University. And we already have amazing educational institutions in Punjab. You know, whether it's research, we've got Niper, we've got, uh, we've got IIT Roper, we've got ISB. So for, for the IT industry, real feed is the kind of manpower that we are getting to work. So I think if these educational institutions can provide amazing talent to IT companies, I don't know why an IT company would want to live in a tier one or work in a tier one city compared to a tier two city like this. And I think for the government, it's also very important. That I think the critical factor for Punjab really is are we able to retain our best people? You know, unfortunately, a lot of a lot of the brain, the brains of Punjab go away to a Silicon Valley or a, or a Toronto. How do how do we kind of save that from uh, you know migrating to a Canada, US, and keep them here? That will only happen if companies like ours, which are futuristic, are able to provide that kind of a, a job opportunity to the youth. And therefore, I think agriculture is great, manufacturing is great, but we need to be futuristic. The government needs to look at what is going to really be the future of the world. IT is going to grow in a very big way. Uh, you'll see a growth in the IT sector with you know collaborative tools, with cloud tools, digitalization tools. IT is going to get bigger and bigger. Uh, there's going to be hyper digitalization in the world. So I think the government needs to play and, and needs to market Punjab as much uh, as an agricultural bowl of uh, the world is great. But let's start looking at the newer sectors. Sure. Kumal, I will come back with a couple of questions for you in terms of women's skill, because that is, uh, and skill development is very close to even uh, Minister Ranaji's heart. So there are a couple of questions, and I do believe that you're doing some work. Uh, there, but let me just go through a round with the other panelists and let them share their views. And then let's make it because we've obviously got a very limited time. So, uh, can I turn to you uh, in 
you letting us know what are the contributions that you think you can bring in for uh, in foreign investments and investments into Punjab post COVID. Make a pick. Good afternoon, Mr. Minister, and my uh, uh, colleague panelist. I will state go to the, the Punjab is a great state, but it has not achieved the height. It has not achieved the progress it should have. The piecemeal approach, which I have been hearing, is certainly not going to lead Punjab to a great state, which is the need of the hour, because you have a specialized place in the state of the country. You know, there is a one thing if you trace the history or anywhere in the world you see the development of the infrastructure, development of the state or development of the society and all things takes place around the railways. Railway, I do not mean the conventional railway. Con railway, I mean you have the uh, bullet train kind of railway, rapid transit railway, metro railway and the conventional railway. But this network is extremely poor in Punjab. So you have to have a rail system all across the, I will put a network of the uh, of uh, rail network all along the way, all along the Punjab. And there the stations, the nodal points, they will, by using the land, by using the airspace, by using the underground, you can create a logistic hubs covering the uh, agriculture, covering the IT. Cover. So this all thing like uh, uh, IT and uh, education institute, they all will become a part of this. Even the so-called smart city will become a part of this, small part of this. So the young youth, which uh, Kamala has very rightly said, rather than going to Toronto or USA, they would like to work there when they, this kind of opportunity is there. And we have the example. You see the South Africa, you see the almost Japan, you see the South Korea, all of the, wherever the rail network has developed, the, the country has progressed in a geometrical terms. This is the one. Where you can have that skill development, education, women empowerment, migrant labor, all will be taken care of. The second point is very important, which unfortunately had not been used. You have a shrine that is uh, Golden Temple, which is devoted all over the world. But this is unfortunate, I will call for the country, unfortunate for the Punjab, that we have not been able to provide a proper connectivity from the Delhi and other part of the world. The kind of investment which you can uh, bring to the Punjab will outplace your requirement if you a single action you take that. And it's possible. In today's technology, I have already given a one page write up to the Nitu. You can have, you need not land. I, am, I will never speak that you require land. I am talking about the existing land which is utilized for this can be effectively used to develop the industry and everything. The, you are already having the highways. And fortunately, all the highways have a medians which are four to six meter wide. Put columns on that on columns, put elevated, and you don't put conventional rattling type of train. You put maglev, which is a much cheaper, the cost is less than metro. And you can achieve a speed of 250 km per hour in no time. Don't follow conventional metro, follow PRT system, which is absolutely uh, uh, environment friendly, much effective, much uh, more cost effective, a much, le much less time to execute. And I can assure you that Punjab will become a state where the people will not go from Punjab to the uh, USA. USA people will come to the Punjab. That's yeah. And it's possible. And it's all migrant problem, women empowerment. Uh, the, the Kamal has very rightly said the IT. My friend Sarjit will talk skill development, education. And you don't make that a smart city. We are talking smart cities. But does anybody know what, what smart city want? Why a smart city cannot be created in this hub? I will call the logistic hub, which will cover everything. And I'm not talking something new. I'm talking to the, uh, talking to you on the 
pattern i have uh, traveled all over world and i have seen all over world and i have given my own thoughts to all over world uh, and you will see the everything coming together you have not to run people will run to you i can tell you mr minister please concentrate on that ppp of model on this and i can assure you the punjab will change in 3 years even with the covid on you have done excellent job and you have captain arvinder singh i have fortunately met him and interacted with him he is a great leader great person has lot of vision please go on to the railway network and i can assure you in the 3 to 4 years time punjab become the state which will have the reverse flow not the other way thank you and this project i am telling you about the 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 uh, golden circuit to golden temple please do that it's not very expensive you will have tons and tons of money i am sure uh, all development what you are thinking all development what you are thinking will come along this Thank you for all your Thank suggestions you. i think uh, this would be a probably a longer discussion you might want so to i will only give you the gist of the gist of this so and, this uh, covid will, covid will continue covid is not going to go away okay so most covid we have to start planning on this start working on this and start working with a plan and make punjab is a city where world will look for it not that punjab look for the world Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to move to Sarapit. Uh, get your views, and uh, we make it precise because I would love to have a lot of questions that we are looking forward to uh, hearing from the minister and have him address those. And we have a lot of questions coming from the audience as well. So, Sarapit, over to you. Yeah. Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Minister, for your uh, kind views. but what i like to input in this important discussion is that we have whenever we talk about a state or a region there are three important points in the uh, ecosystem one is the skill development which the minister talked about other is komal talked about the infrastructure and how good the infrastructure of punjab is but the third thing is that we are still missing the industry the high technology industry in the state like the world knows silicon valley as a technology hub they know bangalore as a technology hub but we know punjab as an agriculture hub so what are we exactly doing to change it we might i might think we will require to market ourselves very differently we'll have to create attraction points for the state to bring in more industry into it more uh, financial resources into it maybe fpis apis and maybe this meglev which uh, mr subbir has suggested this can be a very differentiating factor for punjab to bring in new and high tech industry into the state uh, if there is any specific initiative which minister mr minister can add i'll be really grateful for his feedback Yes, Ranaji. You know, uh, uh, Sarabdi ji, you said a right thing that uh, Punjab is always known for its uh, agrarian shape and uh, being a uh, agricultural state. Uh, we have uh, showed our worth not to the only our country, but to the rest of the world. You know, we brought the big revolution. We brought the white revolution. Uh, today we are the biggest in uh, producing the honey we are uh, producing cereals about wheat and rice together about uh, 35% of the total country's uh, consumption and uh, we are uh, going very high in a, in a big way in a livestock uh, also so uh, the perception which you want us to become an industrialist or uh, industrial state i would say uh, you are rightly said that fbis are required in a big way you know like uh, mr subbir knows that we have a uh, kapoorthala coach factory now because of the indian railways and uh, you know the uh, at that time the vision uh, by the congress government in the center we brought this uh, 
Kapoor Thala Coach Factory over there. And I am sure uh, he being the member of the railway board, he knows it. Okay, how successful is that? You know, our uh, people who are skilled, semi-skilled or, uh, you know, uh, otherwise uh, uh, doing a labor job or technicians or electricians and other technocrats. We have no dearth of these kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, people who are really doing excellent job in their professions, whether they are doing it here or they're doing it states or UK or anywhere in Dubai. Look at who has built whole of Dubai. Right. It's a Punjab labor. The, uh, the first and foremost, if some uh, uh, construction company is there, they would all like to opt uh, a Punjabi labor, a Punjabi electrician. Because they, they are doing things with great zeal. So, making Punjab a industrial hub is very, very important. We have uh, certain uh, items which are, we are, uh, you know, we have our USP in that, like auto parts, like cycle, cycle parts, like hand tools, the agriculture industry. You know, and uh, IT is, of course, there, but these are the basic things which we can lead at any time. The only thing we are lacking at the moment, because we suffered certain, uh, you know, when the 1947, when India was, India and Pakistan was uh, created, at that time, who suffered? Punjab. Right. Uh, you know, no other, I mean, Tamil Nadu never suffered. Rajasthan never suffered. So we suffered. So then, the after few years, then we had a 1965 war. Again, we suffered. Then we, 71 war. Again, Punjab suffered. Then in 80s, we suffered by the uh, great impact of the uh, terrorism, which was created by our neighboring country. And they again disturb our peace and economy and shattered it in big way. So now, you know, keeping all those things against all odds, Punjab is still, you know, uh, trying to put his head out to the rest of the world. And uh, in this line, like you said that, uh, I would request Mr. Sukhbi, okay, and you also, as far as skill development is concerned, and Komalji is there, she has got a, she's a young girl, but great experience. I appreciate her, uh, you know, uh, way of working. And, uh, and I would say, kindly come out with some kind, help us out. Okay. Give us some blueprint. Like you said that it's a very good idea that you said we don't need to acquire land. And there is no land to acquire in, in Punjab at the moment. We don't have land. The land is very expensive. Right. So, so we are now in agriculture, we are going for diversification. You know, we are by growing wheat and paddy, we have reached the uh, top. It is uh, the, the best yield in the world we are taking. But now we are thinking of going for vegetables, fruits, horticultures, uh, fisheries. And we are going uh, various other ways of uh, cultivation, like vertical uh, cultivation. So uh, all these things we are under consideration, but we need the expertise like you people are there. And if you could give us certain ideas, we can have a meeting with our Honorable Chief Minister, who is very keen and his only, 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 you know, uh, mission is to make Punjab a number one state as we were earlier, few years back. So these setbacks, we had it, but we are slowly and slowly, our youth is very, you know, versatile, violent, everything. I mean, they, you give them the job and they do it. Yeah. Something, they adapt it. Today, you know, in, in my rural area, I'm, my district is, Rosepur district is the most backward we are on the uh, border of the Pakistan from where I am now talking to you people. Can, can anybody imagine that I would be having uh, a VC few years back sitting in uh, an odd, a small village. I can tell you my the Pakistan border is only about uh, 5 kilometers from here. So uh, today that technology and that people and it has been 
I am not carrying my any private secretary or somebody. It is all done by the voice of the village. I said I want to have VC. Okay. He said no worries, sir. We are organized. Good, good. And I just came and sat, and they had organized it. So I'm just sitting there, you know, their budget, mind, and their uh, brain. It is really fertile. We need to give them some more uh, push, and they will. They can reach anywhere. So, if I talk about sports, you know, I was in Indonesia in 2018. I saw my people. I saw my girls in kabaddi in hockey. They won medals. They, they uh, uh, in short putt, in uh, triple jump, in uh, hockey, in shooting. So these are the priority individual games. Look at Abhinav Bindra, the only person in individual gold medalist from the Olympic belongs to Punjab, and he is a Punjabi. So this is it. So that is Minister. Can I for a minute? Inter I will to intervene for a minute. Uh, Mr. Minister, you are very rightly said, or I have very uh, initially said, Punjab has great potential. We must use that. I will only add one thing. Rather than having a, you, this is an agriculture state, you have but yield and all kind of investment. Please develop these hubs around the stations because logistically you will have no problem. You can cover everything. We can discuss this in detail. The biggest advantage will be. There will not be any pollution. There will not be transit problems, and they will not be the problem the kind of city facing today. And top of that, there will not be any slums, which is the biggest problem of India today. And I am suggesting you a, a model. This is not a model. This fortunately was this was also uh, in the railway budget of 2009 when I was in the board. We have put this, but when I left the board, unfortunately, didn't see the light of the day. This all. Concept like Jhopri, uh, like you are hearing the famous uh, in Bombay, Surat, and other places. I have seen personally that this all will disappear, and you don't need need land. I am still saying you don't need land. You You're can right. it. you can develop a, a agro based industry. You can have a skill development. You can IT IT. You can have a lot of things for women empowerment. You can have skill development, legal. Why you the sky is the limit, and you will never be found for FDI. FDI. So coming <coughs> to FDI, if we really go in, in a systematic way, Kaskar, the, the which uh, Sarabjit has said, the FDI will be so much that you may not be able to manage the FDI for this project. So talking of and FDI, that will become the focal point for the development of the project. Subhiji. Uh, Taking from here, uh, talking of FDI, uh, Mr. Minister, the Punjab diaspora is settled mm -hmm. almost all over the world, and FDI mm -hmm. from this diaspora is a very low-hanging fruit because I'm sure they want to give back. So, is the Punjab government doing anything to attract this FDI from this diaspora? Of course, Punjab government is uh, because they're also the NRI minister. Punjab government has uh, set up uh, uh, investment Punjab Investment Bureau, headed by a very experienced uh, at the level of the Chief Secretary, IAS officer, and headed by our uh, Honorable Chief Minister. He's the chairperson of that Punjab Investment Bureau. We had many uh, conferences and conferences uh, on on this uh, particular subject, and like Mr. Subir is saying. That uh, agro-based processing plants, uh, we do not even run for a raw material. That's right. We don't need a raw material from Bihar, Bengal, or Madras, or from UK or US. Why should we wait when we have so much raw material with us? For example, uh, we we have a paddy straw. Mm. Instead of stubble burning, if we are now having about uh, biomass uh, plants about uh, 10 in the state and we are planning to open more 40 more plants for biomass. So we can produce ethanol, ethanol prices are very good and we can produce electricity which would be self-sufficient for to supply various small, medium and micro uh, entrepreneurs to give them the uh, bijli at a very, uh, you know, nominal rates. And then we in food processing, whether you talk about the uh, uh, kidno, 
Now, Kinukya cultivation is again Punjab is uh, in a big way. Although we have got a small belt to grow kinu, and which is a citrus fruit, and it is uh, known and it is it, it goes every nook and corner of the country. Same thing, we are very, 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 very good in maize. So now this time we have increased the uh, area from the maize cultivation from 3.5 uh, hectares, uh, hectares to 7 lakh hectares. So we are going for diversification also. So vegetables, we had, again, we statically, we are uh, situated at a point like Dubai's, uh, you know, they import have even a glass of water. They import all green vegetables. They import all uh, uh, cereal. So it is very convenient from a flight and a, a cargo going from Amritsar or from Chandigarh to Dubai, which is only two and a half hour flight. And even the perishable goods could be, uh, you know, managed to go through uh, these kind of short flights. So we are working on. So coming, to, coming to Komal, uh, Komal, uh, you are employing a lot of women in terms of uh, developing their skills with coding, I understand. So, uh, in fact, it'd be very nice. Uh, uh, there is a very good foundation doing a lot of work and we need your skills in terms for Punjab. I'm, the reason I say that because I'm also associated with the uh, and uh, this is where we're looking at skilling women and especially the migrant talent that has come back and uh, would you would like to share this with the audience as well as to what can we do in terms of skilling the women yeah so Neetho, I've always believed that when you're an entrepreneur you have to you know you make your profits but your profits have to be with the purpose so I'm very actively involved. I'm on the board of a lot of uh, international organizations, national level organizations, which are promoting technology skill development in women. Uh, if you look at the stats, I like to share with SODG is that, you know, uh, coding and technology is going to be the fastest growing industry in the world and the highest paid. Uh, in, in the US, they're expecting 1.5 million jobs to be generated in about two years, right? So opportunities, as I said, in tech are immense. Uh, if you look at China's GDP again, China's GDP doubled because they have the largest proportion of women participation in the workforce. And if so, so can Punjab be like a state which is known for not just a skill technology development for women? It can shoot its DG, GDP by double or triple if we focus on the right areas. Now, I work with a I work with a foundation called Girls X Techs in Punjab, which is which is in fact founded by one of the entrepreneurs in Punjab. We're really doing that is we are working at two levels. One, we are going to engineering colleges. India has the largest number of numbers in terms of women engineers who graduate, right? And Punjab itself has about 75 engineering colleges. However, the awareness about the opportunities in technology, even the B grade engineering colleges don't know about it. So what we've started doing is we've started going to rural and semi-urban uh, village, villages and cities. And we start telling women and girls in grade seventh and eighth about coding opportunities. And then we've tied up with international organizations like Girls Who Code, who then bring in online courses for them like Coursera, Microsoft, Canva, where even if they are not full-fledged engineers, at least they know what the opportunities are. We have platforms where they can learn online. They can enroll in, you know, intermediary courses, basic courses, high level courses. And we're starting to see that we then tie up with uh, IT industries like we've tied up with Shiro's recently. And they have promised to absorb the girls who are getting trained in coding. So it's an amazing plethora where you have awareness first at school level. Then you give them online courses on time. And then if you're looking at the IT industry growing in Punjab, look at the look at the workforce you will have in IT in, say, five or 10 years for Punjab. And 50% women working in technology means a huge jump for the economy of Punjab, the GDP. So I think the only thing missing really here is action from the government. I'd like to ask uh, the minister himself that how do you make that a trust area? I I'm not saying stitching is bad or computer courses are bad. But if you're looking at taking women forward like 100 steps instead of two steps at a time year on year, what is the trust area? Can this be like a, a mission statement for Punjab that we're going to train maximum women in technology and change the entire landscape of how how the world looks at women in tech? Can that be a trust area for the government? That would also be my question. 
comment on any contribution we can make. Well, you are uh, very rightly yes. pointed out. Yes. Very good question. Uh, the situation today is that you know, first of all, we have planned to change, and we are changing the uh, not the I won't say the uh, social fiber and social structure which is existing in Punjab and the perception of women being coming exactly. out and working. Yeah. You know, what we have done that, you know, you just can't. A, a girl who is studying and you ask suddenly to do this job or that job, first of all, you need to give her little exposure. So once we give uh, if, uh, the ladies and the girls and the women uh, we uh, I'm mentioning, we need to give them little exposure. Why are, how we are gave, giving the exposure now? You know, my chief minister and the cabinet has decided that in panchayat elections, 50% we have 13,000 panchayats, correct? And you multiply that with the seven members. You know, we have more than, uh, uh, you know, uh, 35,000 or something, you know, members, Jilla Parishad, Block Samtis, and it all make, makes about 35,000 members. So we said 50%, 50, five zero would be reserved for the women. Same thing in municipal or corporation or uh, Nagar Nigam, we said 50% seats would go to the women. So with this, what happened today, if you uh, go and Google it, the young girls who have done some college or they are studying, they have started coming out in the public, got elected themselves as Sarpanches and Jilla Parishad members and various other things. So it is building a confidence with the with, with the woman folk, and same thing. I as I mentioned to you that this is my the remotest area of the whole of Punjab, and we have this uh, uh, SC girls, which we call Dalit women, who were earlier not even uh, going to the school more than uh, fifth class, beyond a fifth class. Today, those girls are coming to me, sir. We are doing graduation. We are appearing for IPS. We are appearing for IAS. We are appearing for PCS and uh, other, uh, you know, jobs like nursing and uh, uh, medical jobs. So it is a sea change which is coming. And we have started this since last, from our first government in 2002. And then in between, we uh, we couldn't come back to the power because Akali and BJP government was there. And now it is three years now that we are in the government. And we are very fast moving in this direction where we can give them confidence and we bring them to uh, to come out with a micro and mini uh, scale industries and other things which they are now mentally prepared and uh, uh, the facilities which we are giving uh, to these girls is uh, remarkable. And we have given a free education till class 12th all the girls who are studying in government schools. So these are the things we are doing at the moment to uh, bring them up to a level uh, where you said not two steps walking, but a hundred steps. So I'm sure uh, with this pace, they will go even thousand steps because they are uh, very uh, energetic and the enthusiasm is there. So they want to do something. So we are actually over on our time schedule here. Uh, the discussions were really interesting. And uh, I think uh, showcasing Punjab in 45 minutes is not easy. So uh, I guess we'll have to have another session like this. But before we go, I think uh, if we can have a very quick uh, closing remark from you, Minister, that'll be amazing. Uh, well, uh, you know, I have these kind of, uh, you know, with meeting you, Komal, Sarabjiji, and Supirji, I think it was quite educative. And my all thanks goes to Mr. Frank, who you please convey to him that uh, it was an excellent, uh, you know, step he has decided to go for this uh, instead of cancelling or postponing. So we have decided for this virtual meeting, which is really meaningful. And uh, Exchange of views are very, very important. Unless you come face to face and talk on these issues uh, by sitting in your office or 
uh, writing papers or uh, going through Googles, you can't do it. You know, you need to have a one-to-one -one discussion. Ke jab tak tusi Punjabi ch kaha bade ke na akha meche akpa ke. Par jini the gal na hobe, oni the tusi kisi natije the, kisi results the. Results are oriented ni hunde. So today meeting was really result oriented, and I look forward. For uh, such kind of meetings, and I will ask uh, uh, my panelists, uh, Sukhvirji, Komalji, and Sarpiji, of course, you are there, to be in touch. Let's not say that, okay, we have finished, this was a one job, and we have uh, had a uh, half an hour meeting, and now we forget about uh, Punjab and we forget about the topics which we are discussing. I know. So, it, the topic must continue, whether it's a Punjab or any other part of the country. So, yeah. reference should be given to Punjab because we are sitting on a border, as I mentioned. So, today, the 20 Jawan who are shaheed in China, there are four Punjab. So, uh, Punjabis have always uh, come forward for anything for the nation or for the community, whether we talk about all the Gurus from first Guru to the tenth Guru, Guru Gobind Singh. So we have always fought and we will keep on fighting for the humanity, for the well-being of the state and for the well-being of the rest of India. So good to have you with us. Um, Stan, thank you so much, my panelists. Uh, it was really nice. And I'm really sorry we had very little time. We could have gone on. <laughs> yeah. Thank, you so much. thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Great.